Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking all about fasting. Fasting has been used as part of religion and cultural traditions for quite some time. In fact, you can trace fasting to ancient Greek philosophers like Pythagoras and Hippocrates, and some of you may have experienced fasting growing up as part of Lent or Ramadan as sort of a spiritual cleansing or just family tradition. Over the past several years, fasting has become a popular weight loss method. You may be thinking, why in the world would anyone want to go without food for an extended period of time if they didn't have to? I remember my mom telling me, you gotta finish all your food because there were some starving kids in some third world country. Now people are starving themselves on purpose? Okay. Well, as many of you know, there's no shortage of food in most developed countries like the US. And dieting isn't exactly fun. In fact, it's quite the opposite, which makes cutting back on calories and giving up foods we love so hard. Food is everywhere, and we end up getting hangry when we don't get enough. With all the temptation, how does one constantly cut calories to lose weight? Well, this is one of the reasons fasting has gained so much popularity. With fasting, you're only dieting part-time, as opposed to every day. So it's a cure for what's called a diet fatigue. The questions are, does it work? And can people stick to it so they get lasting results? We'll dig right into the research to find out the answers to those questions. Okay, so the general definition of fasting is little to no eating for a specified period of time, followed by normal eating. However, there are several different protocols. First, there's time-restricted eating, eating within a certain window of time. Secondly, there's intermittent fasting, which can be subdivided into alternate day fasting of zero to maybe 500 calories a day, or the 5-2 protocol, where you're fasting two separate days a week. Then there's periodic fasting, or prolonged fasting, which you don't eat for two to 21 plus days. This approach also includes something called fasting mimicking diets, which we won't get into in this video. So time-restricted eating. I'll call this TRE for short. TRE is eating all of your calories within a specified time window every day. Common examples include the 16-8 TRE, in which all food is consumed within eight hours, followed by 16 hours of no eating. The 24 TRE restricts eating to a four hour window and so on. Maintaining an eating window of eight to 12 hours is associated with lower body fat, less inflammation, improved gut function, better sleep, and improved markers of aging. There's some promising, yet limited, research in humans. Five studies total by my count at this point in time. So here's the punchline with TRE. It reduces the number of calories people consume which then creates a calorie deficit and leads to weight loss. In a 2018 pilot study on 23 obese subjects who adopted a 16-8 time-restricted eating schedule, so they ate within eight hours, they did that for three months, this study revealed the following. Participants ate less to the tune of 341 calories a day by eating within that eight hour window between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Prior to the study, they reported eating within an 11 hour window. So they reduced that window by three hours and ate less. They were instructed to not change their diet so they could eat whatever they wanted within the window. And they were not asked to track what they ate, so no calorie counting, which for some people, they have zero desire to do. They were limited to water and calorie-free beverages, only such as black coffee, tea, and diet sodas the remaining 16 hours. And because they ate less, guess what happened? They lost weight to the tune of 3% of their starting body weight compared to matched controls. On average, participants stuck to the eight hour time eating window almost six days a week throughout the three month study. So adherence was pretty high. Okay, more research. A separate pilot study resulted in a 400 calorie a day deficit, a 20% decrease and weight loss of 4% of their starting body weight. Subjects also reported better energy levels and better sleep. What about TRE 
in combination with exercise. One study had 18 young active males follow a four hour eating window, so 24 TRE, four days a week for eight weeks in combination with resistance training three days a week. And they compared this group to another group that were following their normal diet, but were also resistance training. There was no limitation of food during the eating window, and on the days they were lifting and not following the TRE, they could eat whatever they wanted. The TR group ate 667 calories less on the four TRE days. This is in line with the previous studies, which show that people eat less with an eight and 10 hour window. However, between the groups, there were no significant changes in body composition. Thankfully, another study looked at a 16-8 TRE and resistance training in 34 normal weight males with at least five years of lifting experience. Both groups consumed three meals a day, either within an eight hour window or a 12 hour window. After eight weeks, the eight hour TRE group lost a significant amount of fat mass and both groups maintained their lean body mass while increasing their strength. The authors attributed the fat loss to the eight hour window, attributing changes to adiponectin, a hormone involved in glucose and fat metabolism. Overall, it appears to me that TRE has some benefits in overweight, obese, and even healthy normal weight athletes based on the few human studies thus far. The exact mechanisms have yet to be flushed out, but this strategy might be worth a try for some individuals. Think about how most people eat, light in the morning and heavier in the evening. And the data backs this up. It shows that people eat fewer calories, about a quarter of their calories before noon, and over a third, 37.5% to be exact, of their calories after 6 p.m. Let's switch gears. Alternate day fasting is the most well-studied type. This entails 24 hours of little to no eating, followed by 24 hours of eating also referred to as alternating between fasting and feasting. One popular approach is the 5-2 diet, in which you choose two, typically non-consecutive days, maybe Monday and Thursday, and you eat normally the other five days. Other approaches include consuming either nothing or very little. In the studies, it's typically 25% of calorie needs on one day, followed by eating normally on what's called feast or feeding days. You may think, that hey, 24 hours of little to no eating, well that's gonna lead to binging, right? Or overeating the next day or overcompensating. Surprisingly, at least to me, the research shows the opposite. That is, alternate day fasting leads to an overall decrease in calorie intake of approximately 25%. So it leads to weight loss. Interesting, right? In the first randomized trials with obese adults comparing zero calorie alternate day fasting to the traditional method of incorporating a daily deficit of 400 calories, well, both groups lost a bunch of weight. So you might be wondering what happened to the metabolism? Doesn't it hurt your metabolism to not eat every single day? Resting metabolism actually decreased similarly in both groups with the reduction being proportional to the weight they lost. So the fasting group's metabolism didn't get messed up. Six months later, weight regain was minimal with body composition changes favoring the fasting group. As expected with weight loss, both the groups experienced similar positive changes in total cholesterol, LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, triglycerides, and fasting glucose. Well, the researchers concluded zero calorie alternate day fasting to be not only safe, but tolerable and equally effective as the traditional method, which is restricting your calories daily to produce short-term weight loss. It's also shown to reduce chronic disease risk factors without risk of weight regain six months later. The data also indicates that short-term zero calorie fasting doesn't damage one's metabolism. Whether that occurs with alternate day fasting on a long-term basis is yet to be determined. Okay, let's talk about other studies, and they're all short-term. And what they showed was not only did people lose weight, they preserved lean body mass. In these studies in which lean mass was not preserved, the daily calorie deficits were greater and protein intake tended to be lower. Okay, really important side note here. Weight loss in general leads to about 75% fat loss 
and 25% lean body mass loss. The loss of lean body mass is always greater when one or all three of these factors exist. A severe calorie deficit that's like 50% of total calorie needs, lower protein intakes, and lack of exercise, namely resistance training. Good to know, right? Okay, back to alternate day fasting. A much larger and longer randomized trial with 100 obese adults found that alternate day fasting was equally effective as continuous calorie deficits over a six month period designed for weight loss, followed by a six month weight maintenance phase. The alternate day fasting group consumed 25% of their calorie needs, about 500 calories on fasting days, and 125% of their calories on their feasting days. The group that had a daily calorie deficit also cut their intake by 25%. Again, going back to not having to diet every single day. So here's what happened. After the six month weight loss phase, there were no significant differences between groups for weight loss, body fat, or lean mass. After a year, there was no significant difference for weight regain. The alternate day fasting group regained an average of 1.7 pounds, and the continuous daily calorie deficit group regained an average of 3.3 pounds. So, contrary to what the researchers hypothesize, alternate day fasting did not produce greater weight loss or improvements in cardiovascular risk factors, nor was it easier to stick to. In fact, it might be more difficult. It did, however, produce similar results to traditional dieting or continuous calorie restriction for weight loss and maintenance. Put another way, alternate day fasting didn't increase risk of weight regain. So, what does the overall body of evidence show about alternate day fasting? We can get this information from scientific reviews. That's when authors pool all of the related research and the data on a particular topic, they analyze it and then they draw a conclusion. This gives us more insight than looking at individual studies. So here's a summary of two separate reviews. One review identified these key points. As we talked about, most studies are short-term, that is less than six months, and these studies show that intermittent or alternate day fasting being equally as effective as the traditional dieting approach for reducing weight loss with no evidence of harm. The review also concluded that hunger and adherence can be challenging. Think about how fasting might impact your social life, dinner meetings, family gatherings, and other events you typically enjoy. There's a lot that isn't known yet about fasting. Some data suggests that intermittent fasting is not associated with disordered or binge eating and low mood states. Other studies are more cautious and do not suggest intermittent fasting for people with a history of eating disorders, depression, and maybe even anxiety. It's also not indicated for people with diabetes or meds that require food intake unless under the care of a medical professional. The impact of intermittent fasting on reproduction and menstrual cycles, unknown. And we don't know much about whether intermittent fasting can prevent weight gain in people with a healthy body weight. So these authors concluded that the ideal fasting protocol cannot be determined at this present time based on the research so far, or whether fasting is an effective long-term strategy without adverse effects on metabolism, reproduction, and overall health. A more recent review had similar findings. Intermittent fasting may not be appropriate for individuals with eating disorders and depression since fasting may lead to overeating followed by guilt, anxiety, thus potentially triggering or exacerbating depressive symptoms. Athletes who perform high intensity activity may experience performance decrements, although intermittent fasting in combination with endurance exercise may benefit body composition. Animal studies show positive effects on the gut microbiome resistance to age-related disease, inflammation, and lifespan. However, whether these benefits occur in humans is unknown. Reports of dropout rates in intermittent fasting studies has been shown to be as high as 40%. So the impact of intermittent fasting on hunger and lifestyle, including social activities, may make this weight loss strategy pretty hard to adhere to and adopt as a lifelong approach to managing weight. So at present, it, intermittent fasting appears to be equally effective as continuous calorie restriction. And diet fatigue may deem intermittent fasting easier for some people. You just aren't dieting all the time. It's also a very simple strategy. You don't count macros, you don't eliminate entire food groups, or you don't give up your favorite foods. 
So people with a highly demanding career, maybe people who aren't interested in tracking food at all, counting their macros, they can handle the stress of not of fasting and not eating for periods of time. That, those might be the people that this might be suited for. The limited evidence thus far shows that time-restricted eating produces a 20% calorie deficit, resulting in weight loss of between one and 4% of their initial body weight for over a three to four month span. The research also shows at present that alternate day fasting results in a daily calorie deficit of 25 to 35% and weight loss of four to 6% of starting body weight over three months. So you get some weight loss with TRE and you get a little bit more with intermittent fasting. There's no doubt that larger studies comparing the different types of fasting protocols are needed to tell us more about this approach in order to make definitive, very specific recommendations. In the short term, you'll experience some modest weight loss due to the overall reduction in calories that takes place. And these results are similar to traditional dieting or sustaining a daily calorie deficit. Again, long-term benefits as well as negative effects are unknown.